Hey, so I just wanted to jump on here real quick before we start the video to let you know that I am a Vancouver local in case you didn't know. Um, so that means that this video is just an example of what I might choose to do if I were traveling to Vancouver um, solo. So let's start with a set of assumptions. The first is that I only have three days. The second is that I'm only taking public transit or walking. And the third is that I'm staying in the downtown area. So to make it less intimidating for anyone who's new to solo traveling, I've kept it fairly local to the downtown area and I've avoided fancier restaurants for the most part. I started the day at Purebred in Gastown, a bakery that first opened in Whistler before expanding to Vancouver. The first thing you'll notice when you walk in is the plethora of baked goods you can choose from. From here, I walked to the Coal Harbour waterfront. You'll know you're there when you see the five white sails of Canada Place, a major cruise ship terminal for the region. Coal Harbour stretches from here all the way to Stanley Park, and is so named due to the discovery of coal in the harbour in 1862. Just before I reached Stanley Park, I picked up some sushi to have for lunch later. I always recommend tourists ride a bike around the seawall of Stanley Park, often referred to as Vancouver's crown jewel. There are plenty of places you can rent bikes from on the northeastern end of Denman Street. Note that the smaller shops will be a bit cheaper than the big one on the corner. The 9km bike path around the Stanley Park seawall is one way only, so you have to start on this end of the route, which is where Coal Harbour ends. Make sure you stick to the bike lane and don't ride on the pedestrian lane unless you are getting off your bike. This is an extremely scenic bike ride and it never gets old for me. As you can see, the weather is beautifully sunny because it was July when I filmed this. Usually summer is the best time to visit Vancouver as you're more likely to have good weather. However, our summers are becoming hotter and more unpredictable. Sometimes there are wildfires that bring in smoke, obstructing views and making it unpleasant to be outside. So if you don't mind a chance of rain, visiting during other seasons isn't necessarily a bad idea either. It'll be less busy too. Near the end of the route, you'll encounter a few beaches. The first one is Third Beach, which is where I stop to have my lunch. Sushi is everywhere in Vancouver, so I'd be surprised if you didn't have some while visiting. And if you're not sure about eating raw fish, try the California roll, which was apparently invented right here in Vancouver. At the end of the seawall path, I reached English Bay Beach, which is probably the most popular beach in Vancouver. Some ice cream from the rain or shine truck here is never a bad idea. After returning my hypothetical rental bike, because I use my own bike for this video, I headed into the residential streets of the West End. This neighborhood is a residential area right next to the downtown core and is surprisingly quiet and quaint for being where it is. On Barclay Street, I pass by the Rody House Museum. It's the restored Victorian home of Vancouver's first bookbinder. Definitely something that I would visit and have done so in the past. Joe Forte's seafood and chop house might seem intimidating for a solo traveler, but it's not so bad if you go during happy hour. This restaurant is very much a Vancouver establishment. It's been around since 1985 and is named after a beloved Vancouverite. You can read the story on the back of the menu. I love the old timey feel inside and the food is pretty good too. My goal today, however, was to eat some oysters. At this point, I'm in the central downtown area, a good place to just walk around and look at the buildings or go into the shops. Vancouver's central library branch is a pretty cool building. Its design is inspired by the Roman Colosseum.
I don't think many people know this, but if you go to the very top, there is a cool little rooftop garden. Next, I walked over to Yale Town. Notable for its red brick buildings, it used to be an industrial area of warehouses as it was a terminus for the Canadian Pacific Railway. Now it's home to trendy restaurants and boutique shops. I grabbed dinner at Hundy, a casual burger joint in Yale Town. I haven't tried the beef burgers yet, but this fried chicken burger was fantastic. To end off the day, I walked back up on Davie Street into Davie Village, which is basically Vancouver's gay village. From here, I headed down to Sunset Beach, a perfect place to watch the sunset. Granville Island is a peninsula situated under the Granville Bridge. While there are shops, restaurants and theatres, the biggest draw for people is the public market. First things first, I grabbed breakfast at Preservatory Provisions and Toast Bar in the market. Okay, could I get the ricotta toast? Sure. Inside the market, you'll find tons of produce, meats, seafood, baked goods, gifts, and much more. One of the best ways to get between Granville Island and downtown is the Aquabus, little tugboat ferries that cross False Creek. Is this going to David Lamb? David Lamb? Yeah. There are multiple stops you can choose from and you can get both one-way or round-trip tickets. I needed to get back to the downtown area, so I took one to the David Lamb Park stop. This way I get a nice walk along the False Creek waterfront to my next stop. Vancouver's Chinatown is North America's third largest after New York and San Francisco, and the largest in Canada. Here I would like to point out that Chinatown does have close proximity to the downtown east side, an area that visitors might want to avoid due to the large amount of homelessness and drug use, among other issues, so just something to be aware of. For lunch, I went to Phnom Penh, a popular family-run Vietnamese-Cambodian restaurant in Chinatown, known for their fried chicken wings, butter beef, and beef look lac. Note that lines form basically as soon as the restaurant opens, so you will probably have to wait. <laughs> Most recently, the Chinese Canadian Museum opened up in Chinatown, so I actually got to visit it for the very first time. Given the large presence of ethnic Chinese in Vancouver, I think that this is an important museum to have in this city. It's located inside the Wing Sang Building, Chinatown's oldest. Burning 
My last stop in Chinatown is Mello. The cereal milk cream donut here is my absolute favorite. Right next to Chinatown is historical Gastown, the very first neighborhood of Vancouver. I love the cobblestone streets and old lampposts that light up Water Street at night. For dinner, however, I turned down one of the back alleys, ominously named Blood Alley. Gringo is a fun little Tex-Mex spot for tacos and cocktails. It wouldn't be surprising if you made some new friends here as a solo traveler. Finally, I ended the night at Guild & Co, a cozy live music venue located underground. They have shows every night with different artists playing. You just pay $6 for every set that you stay for. Brekka is one of my favorite bakeries in Vancouver. It has a large selection of baked goods and drinks. It's not too expensive and is open 24 hours. There are a total of seven locations now across Vancouver. This one is near Waterfront Station. The plan is to hike to Quarry Rock, located in North Vancouver. I took the 211 bus from downtown. 45 minutes later, I reached the community of Deep Cove. Thank you. The Quarry Rock hike is a good one to do solo, as it's well frequented, so you'll never really be alone, and it has a good effort to reward ratio. It's also transit friendly. As with anything else, but particularly popular places like this, I would highly recommend going on a weekday and going early. This hike is about 4 kilometers long with 200 meters of elevation gain. It should take you less than an hour to get to the top. Make sure you wear proper hiking footwear and bring plenty of water. I'll link the 10 hiking essentials below and make sure you let someone know where you're going. The trail is easy enough to follow if you look for these bright orange stickers. After my hike, I decided to have lunch right in Deep Cove. Unfortunately, there was a lot of construction when I was there, but it is normally very cute. I then took the bus to Lonsdale Quay, the sea bus ferry terminal in North Vancouver. Here there are restaurants, a market, and views of Vancouver across the water. This would also have been a great place to grab lunch. Finally, I took the sea bus back to downtown Vancouver. The C bus is a passenger ferry which connects downtown Vancouver to North Vancouver. It's part of the public transit system and always a fun experience for visitors. I would imagine that at this point, after having gotten all sweaty on the hike, I would want to go back to my accommodation to shower and to just take a break. So assuming this, my next and final stop for this solo trip would be dinner at Ramen Dambo on Robson Street. We have quite a few good Japanese ramen spots in Vancouver, and this is one of them. So I hope that was helpful for anyone who's looking to visit Vancouver, especially as a solo traveler. Um, I think that Vancouver is a pretty easy city to start with if you're new to solo traveling. If you're interested in visiting other places outside of the downtown area, um, let me know in the comments below because I think there are a lot of other places further out that are worth visiting if you have more time. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your travels.